The International Phonetic Alphabet, also known as the IPA, is a compilation of the sounds of the world's languages, right? Well, if you've seen Tom Scott's video, The Language Sounds That Could Exist But Don't, that might be your impression of the IPA, but it's not exactly correct. And if you haven't seen that video yet, please do check it out beforehand before watching the rest of this video. But anyway, let's get started. The ones with white backgrounds are possible for humans to make, but they've not been given a symbol because linguists have never found them actually being used as sounds in any of the world's languages. Sometimes they are found to exist by some researcher somewhere, and if that happens, then the International Phonetics Association will add a symbol. The last time that happened was in 2005. So, let's break down what Tom Scott's talking about here. Uh, you can see here clearly on the consonant chart of the IPA that there are blank-ish spaces, these white spaces that he's talking about, where there are no specific symbols to indicate sounds that occur there, right? And uh, by his definition, you would say that these sounds don't occur in the world's languages, but they are possible to be pronounced by, the, by humans. Uh, but that's not exactly the case. Let's take a look at the dental stop, for example, the section over here, dental plosive or dental stop. This does actually have a place that occurs in the world's languages. For example, it occurs in Spanish in the word gato, gato. The T is not um, in the word, is not an English T uh, that is alveolar, right? So it's not da, da, it's more ta, ta. It's not like uh, Tom, for example, it's gato, gato. The tongue touches the teeth in this instance. However, it doesn't have its own unique symbol in the IPA. Instead, we have to use what are called diacritics. That little uh, symbol at the bottom of the T and the D there are diacritics. Uh, but there's other sounds that go through a similar fate and that they don't have special symbols in the IPA chart. For example, uh, the uvular tap, which does occur in the world's languages. It occurs in German in the word Elle, Elle. Uh, it is there, and yet it too is left in this white space. It doesn't have its own unique symbol. It has a diacritic this time above uh, the actual symbol. So what's going on here exactly? Why is it that some sounds are sort of left in the dust when it comes to having their own unique symbol in the IPA chart, but others uh, don't have to go through that sort of thing? Well, to do that, we have to talk about phonemes. Now, what is a phoneme? It's essentially the sounds that we've already been talking about. All these IPA sounds um, that have been mentioned both in this video and in Tom Scott's video, of course, and they're defined as the smallest distinct units of speech, right? They're basically the building blocks of language, what humans use, the most basic units that humans use to communicate in any given language. But let's take a closer look at this particular word in the definition, distinct. What does distinct mean? How can one sound be particularly distinct from another one? Uh, to do that, we have to understand what are called minimal pairs. So, going back to English, right, let's take uh, two words that mean different things, right? Todd and Nod, also written in English, Todd and Nod. We can agree that these two words mean two different things. Todd is a name, of course, and Nod is something that you do with your head. They mean two different things, but they only differ in one sound. Right at the beginning, one has a T that we uh, write in the IPA, of course, as a as a T just like that, and uh, one has an N. These are two sounds, the only two sounds that are different between these two words, yet th that those sounds create difference in meaning in the word, right? That's what we call contrastive. This is a minimal pair, and because that one sound causes a difference in meaning for those two words, that makes them phonemes. We call them phonemes. Let's take another couple of sounds. Uh, this word right here, which is the transcription of the general American way of saying butter, butter. And let's take uh, particularly changing this sound in the middle, this tapped R, 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 r. And we'll swatch it for something more emphatic, like a aspirated T. Butter, butter, butter. Now, 
The difference is here is that while we still only changed one sound, we didn't get a difference in meaning. I might sound a bit weird if I were to say, uh, hey, pass me that butter, instead of, hey, pass me that butter. I would sound weird, but you would understand that I'm saying butter still. It's still the same word. There's no difference in meaning caused by the difference in the sound that's being made, right? That w is what we would call non-contrastive. That means that these two sounds are not different phonemes from one another. They're not unique in the same way that they're not distinctive, I should say, in the same way that T and N were from before. They are together. So what does non-contrastive mean? It means that these two sounds are likely different parts of the same phoneme. There's no distinct meaning difference between the two. Right? And uh, you can go ahead and check the video description for a different presentation where I go a little bit more in depth on one particular phoneme. So let's bring it back to the IPA chart that we were talking about before. This symbol right here, the tapped uh, uvular R, right? This occurs in German, uh, but only in certain circumstances, like we saw before in Ella, Ella, intervocalically, between two uh, vowels. When it's not like that, this sound is the usual uvular trill, r, r, like reise, right? It's the same phoneme. There's no meaning difference between the two. Uh, they're not distinctive. So if I were to say R with a uvular trill like I just did, R, no one would think that that's a different word. They would understand that it's the same word. That's part of the reason why the uvular tap, even though it does occur in the world's languages, doesn't have a special symbol in the IPA chart. Instead, we use that diacritic to denote how it's produced specifically, um, but not have a specific symbol like we would for uh, one of the other sounds. And then back to the Spanish sounds, the dental T and D. These are phonemes of, in, of themselves. Dental T uh, contrasts with M and N and everything else, and with, of course, dental D, just the same. But you notice here that I've removed the alveolar T and D from the chart. That's because there is no alveolar T and D in Spanish. T's and D's are always dental. So there's no contrast between the dental and the alveolar T, right? You don't have a difference in meaning between gato and gato, right? There's no difference there in Spanish, at least. And what you'll find is that in uh, all the world's languages analyzed so far, we don't have any meaning distinctions. There's no difference in phoneme between dental T and D and alveolar T and D. And that's why we denote T and D uh, dentalized with that diacritic instead of using, say, a different symbol altogether. Uh, so that's why the IPA looks a little bit more barren than it probably should be if it were to encapsulate all of the sounds of the world's languages completely. Uh, if it were to do so, then a lot of this space would actually be taken up, a lot of this white space. The only difference is, is that the International Phonetic Alphabet is a compilation of phonemes specifically. They need to be contrasted for, with one another for the International Phonetics Association to believe that it's worth creating a new symbol to, dis to make clear that two phonemes are distinct from one another. And of course, the last time this happened, like Tom Scott says, was with the labial dental flap, this symbol right over here. And the reason that this was made is not because it was found in any of the world's languages by a researcher, but instead it was found in a world's languages where it contrasted with the labial dental fricative that we already know, the. There is a meaning difference in that language, the language of mono. There's a meaning difference between words like ava and words like ala. Because there was this distinction, it was decided by the International Phonetics Association 
that a symbol, a separate new symbol, should be added to the IPA to show that for certainty that these are two completely different phonemes, they're contrastive with one another, and they are distinct. So that's all for that video. If you haven't uh, checked it out already, uh, do look at the rest of Tom Scott's language files videos. They are very useful to uh, getting into the world of linguistics and learning about this complicated uh, speech that we do and how we communicate as a species. Uh, and if you are also interested in linguistics, I have a few other resources available on my website. Links are in the description. Thank you.